Travis Wingood, so. 177. Today is the anniversary. It's more of the Remembrance Day of the assassination of Joseph Smith, Jr. June 27, 1844. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is silent. Nelson spent Thursday talking to new mission presidents to ensure that the first vision and Moroni, which was actually Nephi, but Brigham Young insisted on having it changed to Moroni, <clears throat> that they are actual accurate histories that happened to Joseph Smith. That the 1838 version, despite all of the flaws and errors of actual accurate history, is nonetheless history as crucial to his authority as president of the church, as he is silent about the murder of Joseph Smith. This author, by a Mormon, Spencer uh, W. McBride, yeah, having to read it backwards on the screen, <clears throat> wrote this book, Joseph Smith for President, and talked about religious freedom as the main reason for doing it. Nope. He's wrong. And this video is my yearly tribute to Joseph Smith. Because the church won't do it. The first tribute I gave to Joseph Smith was in the older singles branch in which uh, the Sunday surrounding the actual date. I don't remember if it was actually on the date, but that singles board uh, wanted to remember Joseph Smith as uh, that was the time of his death. And so yeah, it's up to bishops to determine whether Joseph Smith is remembered on this Sunday. And I was asked by uh, my home teaching companion who was in charge of assigning people to give talks in church. And uh, he typically was met with resistance. Nobody wants to get up and speak, except for the same usual several. <clears throat> I had no problems. Being born and raised in the Mormon Church, you get plenty of opportunities to learn how to uh, give talks on the fly, utilize scriptures, and all other techniques to teach and to preach. And so, yeah, it's no big deal. <clears throat> and I gave a tribute to Joseph Smith, referring to his King Follett Discourse in 1844 the year he was assassinated. I had deciphered Paleo-Hebrew because Joseph Smith said that the, the Biblical Hebrew text was translated incorrectly, not just the King James Version. And what assisted me was what's known as Kabbalah. Kabbalah, depending on how you want to pronounce it. There are numerous ways to pronounce things, especially when there were no original vowels. <coughs> and in Kabbalah, I uh, utilized uh, notericon, which is a method of deriving a word by using each of its initial or final letters 
to stand for another, to form a sentence or idea out of the words. This combined with temura, which is a rearranging of the words and sentences to derive deeper spiritual meaning of the words. Now, you might think that this is magic. No, it's mystical, which comes from the Greek for initiatories, which refers to the temple, yes. <clears throat> there were a group called the Gnostics. This was also part of this mystical uh, practice. <coughs> but what I had discovered was that the Paleo-Hebrew letters corresponded to different Egyptian character hieroglyphs than the original theory called the acronym theory. The acronym theory is that each of the names of the letters of the alphabet, Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, etc. You can refer to Psalms 119. And you can't use the Mormon online scriptures. They took them out, I believe. Or they took out the Hebrew letters and left the original names. I don't I can't remember. I don't care. I don't use it. I use the uh, scripture program from the church. <coughs> and by discovering different Egyptian characters corresponding to each letter of the alphabet, I was then able to obtain the individual letter meaning for each and every single letter. There were numerous combo glyphs, if you're familiar with Chinese, which is what I used to confirm my decipherment of the script. They are composed of different lines each line having individual meaning that when combined together creates a fuller meaning. <clears throat> that has been lost to this day but is not completely lost to those who know Chinese. But the speech removes from the original meaning of the combo glyphs <clears throat> and so, for example, in Paleo-Hebrew, there are letters that have a J-stroke with some other uh, lines combined with it. J-stroke is for human, as an illustrative example. And using Notericon and Temura, I was able to do the research test on the vocabulary by doing uh, each three letter word and I also did it for two letter words I took Brown Driver and Briggs's Hebrew English lexicon devoweled every character every word and then had it alphabetized because depending on whether there was a particular vowel at the beginning which got removed determined its rearrangement in the alphabetical structure and then using Notericon and Tamura I then uh, did the combinations of the two letter words of the first and last letters the first two letters and the last two letters to see if I can find a pattern. Yes, I did. And so I've been doing my videos teaching you 
of this decipherment of Paleo-Hebrew. And so, Samson, Solomon, Elijah, Elisha, Jesus, Moses, David, etc. Israel, certain Nelson chose to use the white supremacist meaning of Israel rather than its actual meaning. <clears throat> and in Kabbalah there's also what's called Gematria. You might be familiar with it even if you don't know Gematria. Because in the book of Revelation, it says that the number of the beast is 666. People have used Gematria to search and hunt down the identity of the latter day beast. And even back in the time of the Roman period, people believed it was Nero. And others. <clears throat> Even, as I did the video, uh, uh, image of Shofar. Image of Trump. Totals up to 666. Revelation talks about the image of the beast. His followers wear MAGA over their foreheads. He talked about having a driver's license or some kind of ID in order to go grocery shopping. Remember that? Everybody missed that. I caught it. And then there's another feature of Kabbalah, or Kabbalah, and that is what's known as the Tree of Life. The Tree of Life is composed, I mean, I think I'm done with that, is composed of ten points of contact with eighteen lines connecting the ten points of contact. It is called the Tree of Life and at the very top is the crown. At the very bottom is the kingdom, the bride, the queen. And so, yes, the head, the crown, is uh, known by different names. <coughs> and it has direct impact with the church. It's in the Book of Mormon. Knowing about the Tree of Life led me to this as I knew all about Kabbalah, Kabbalah, <coughs> having deciphered Paleo-Hebrew, which then led me to deciphering Egyptian picture glyphs, because as I understood that the individual letters of the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet corresponded to an Egyptian hieroglyphic character and had meaning, I then applied that to Egyptian with Egyptian picture glyphs, which are distinctive from the hieroglyphic text. We know them as Mormons as facsimiles, because they are copies, facsimiles, of the originals on the papyri. And I've gone over how 
facsimile number three is to be translated. If Abraham is Pharaoh, and the female Pharaoh means that he's in the 18th dynasty of David Moses, the David Moses dynasty. King Tut, David, phonetically the same. <clears throat> Who is Abraham's son? Who is Pharaoh's son? The prince of Egypt. Who is going through his mysteries, initiatories in the temple, to be crowned the king succeeding his father? Isaac. Easy translation. I don't know why Mormon Egyptologists couldn't have figured that one out. I don't know why the presidents of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, who let Mormons assume they have the gift of translation, according to section 107, verse 92, But nonetheless, I apparently have that gift. It was easy. You just have faith in Joseph Smith and produce the fruit to know for yourself by which you can judge whether Joseph Smith was true or false. I found out he was true. The church in translation and historicity of the book of Abraham says he's false. That he's just a revelator. <clears throat> There's also another side of the Smith family that is not acknowledged by the church as well. And they can't. Because if they do, the crucialness of turning the history into reality would take away Nelson's authority, as he believes. <coughs> the uh, <coughs> Smiths were involved in what was called the York Rites Freemasonry. This is not the 33 degree Masons. You've probably heard of Freemasonry and you just naturally assume 33 degrees. Wrong one. That was the one Brigham and Heber and family families were a part of. Joseph Smith, Sr. and Hiram were involved in the York Rites. The York Rites have as the number 10 symbol of perfection in the Tree of Life. 18 is for the meaning life. So 18 and 10 is perfection of life exaltation, the crowning glory of man, and the kingdom, which in Jewish mysticism refers to their latter-day concept of a messiah who is to restore the kingdom of David, which I just already revealed to you as I've already done numerous videos on it is the 18th dynasty of Egypt. The number 10 rank in the York Rites is the Knights Templar. The symbol of the Knights Templar is a cross with a crown hung on it. No man, it's empty. 
because they have the Holy Grail, the knowledge of the descendant of King David, who is to come in the latter days to restore the kingdom of David. The reason why it's a cross has to do with the time frame of when they knew this was going to happen. And John in Revelations talks about it, as I've gone over it with you, which the Book of Mormon likewise talks about it. And I've even given you other exclusive information, because I've already given you a whole bunch already. And there's more to come in this video. Have I lost you already? Samson, the sun king in Paleo Hebrew. Three days of darkness for the latter days. Those that die in his story correspond to solar eclipses in various constellations. Three constellations corresponding to the latter days dates for the three days of darkness solar eclipses and so all prophets prophesy of these days sun shall be darkened moon turned to blood I did the video not too long ago showing how prophets of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints have been following the pattern in dying with lunar eclipses. Since Faust is when I started recognizing it. And yes, we just had one in May, didn't we? Yeah. I told you we're due. They're due. Time's up. We're just waiting. There are other prophecies. <coughs> the Knights Templar are also those attributed to the Friday the 13th infamy, where the Catholic Church, the Pope, was jealous. He wanted them to worship him as the vicar of God. He was jealous of their wealth and their popularity over him. And so yeah, he tried to round them all up and force them to confess or die. Fortunately, there were a number who escaped. They made it to America in 1363 because the Kensington Stone tells us it was a property ownership marker, a sale receipt for the eastern half of the United States where the first and third days of darkness total solar eclipses would cross. The first happened 21st of August 2017. We already know that one. That was in Leo, the lion that Samson killed first. There's an annular one on the 14th of October 2023. So, right now, it's a prophecy. I'm giving you a prophecy. Anybody dare to bet me? I already told you about the one coming on the 21st of August, 2017, in advance. My elders quorum, they didn't believe me. And then it happened, and then the teacher and the elders quorum got up and gave a lesson, I didn't realize Travis was right. I didn't know you could know in advance. 
Uh huh. And then the third day of darkness. The Monday after conference on 8 April 2024. When was the church organized? 6th of April? That's strange. Why not 8 April? Done that video already. <clears throat> and so you can see the Knights Templar influence in the Book of Mormon as Nephi is in the Promised Land and builds the temple patterned after Solomon's temple. Which place were they was second or not second Nephi, it's actually third Nephi, but it's not third Nephi because all kings after Nephi were named Nephi as we were told in the story. In 3rd Nephi, there is an attempted coup to overthrow the constitution of the Nephites, the laws of Mosiah, and return America, I mean the, <laughs> the land of Zarahemla and the Nephites back into a monarchy, and thus the kingmen that uh, Captain Moroni had to do battle with. <clears throat> which a flag is the Egyptian symbol of God, by the way. And, uh, uh, and so then there's a natural disaster that occurs. Complete and utter destruction of the land. The survivors, one of whom is Nephi, son of Nephi. Like I said, Nephi visited Joseph Smith, not Moroni. Because in the beginning of the kingdom is Nephi. The crowning kingdom is Nephi. Son of Nephi. Stick to the pattern. Don't trust those who want to alter this pattern. And wouldn't you know if... Well, I haven't, got, I haven't told you that part yet. I've done the videos on it, but... <coughs> and so, Jesus... comes down out of heaven the sun at noonday that came to Neph Lehi in his first dream in chapter 1 gave him a book said hey Jerusalem's going to be destroyed by Babylon and then Nephi is born in that first year as Lehi sees signs in the heavens in that dream, though Jesus coming out of heaven is one of them, and then also God sitting on his throne, and 12 others following him is another. This comes from the book of Revelation. Chapter 12, for the sign of the birth that Samuel the Lamanite talked about. Revelation 19, verses 11 and 17, is the sign of the death. Samson dies, pushing down the pillars of the temple of the Philistines. Sun King, 8 April 2024.
2024 is also 180 years from why we're celebrating today or rather remembering today the year Joseph Smith ran for president McBride has no clue about any of this 180 years in 2024 when the sign of death corresponding with 3rd Nephi chapter 11 verse 8 where they are gathered at the temple in Bountiful one of the earlier paradises that Lehi and his family made got to before Nephi took over and took him on a boat journey to America to other promised lands so the Book of Mormon's coded too isn't it and so the first vision you have two personages Joseph Smith does not call them Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ one of them says behold this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased so we know their father and son Joseph Smith does not name them they have the brightness of the Sun they came in a pillar of the light just like Jesus to Nephi who gave Nephi leadership of the kingdom the crowning kingdom not Jesus Jesus didn't stick around if you did not know by watching my videos Constantine turned the gospel narratives into historical narratives they were messianic scripture apocalyptic literature but they don't have beasts and dragons they do have a character who does magical stunts turning water into wine and others that have been banned from this canon after Constantine Constantine in the Nicene Council forced the bishops as the Pope is the head bishop over all other bishops that's the length of his authority as the Vicar of God similar to Brigham Young who was only the president of the Quorum of Twelve Traveling Missionaries whose keys were of Peter, James, and John, not of the First Presidency, which is the key of Moses. So, which keys does Nelson claim as the First President? I yeah, took a photo op at the Vatican Temple. And it ain't Moses. And so when we get to the assassination you should have been looking for the same pattern as the story that Constantine turned into a historical narrative and calling Jesus by a brand new Greek word homoousios which is now known as Trinity <clears throat> because in that story is the same pattern of Joseph of Egypt who is betrayed by Judah for 20 pieces of silver Judas 
Greek version in the Gospels narrative betrays Jesus Yah is Savior or salvation salvation Savior corresponds with the number nine in Kabbalah so salvation doubled is 18 it's the name of Jesus Yah salvation Yah is the Hebrew God when I found out that Joseph Smith was correct with his translation of the Hebrew text of the Bible I found out that the head God was indeed given a name Yah the Hebrew God and so yeah I don't understand why the Jews could not identify him as Yah right there in Genesis 1 maybe it's because he had a son named Yah oh, Nephi son of Nephi Yah son of Yah Joseph son of Joseph remember Lehi's blessing to his son Joseph there's also a talking about some other guy who is to come and then the sun at noonday in Egyptian is Amun Joseph Smith refers to him as son Amun meaning that there's a father Amun yep sure enough Pharaohs were son Amun in Egyptian. Mortal men, son of God. Amun. Isaiah, when translated into English, is called Emmanuel. El is God. Amun. The God Amun. That's his name. Not Jesus. Jesus is Elishua. Elisha, who hung out with Elijah, the god Yah. The god Yah and the god of salvation hung out together. They parted the Jordan River together, just like Moses parted the Sea of Reeds. As you know it, it's the Red Sea. But it's a parting of waters, just like in the creation story in Genesis 1. The waters above and the waters below are divided with the air, rakia, in between, and the dry land rises up. This is all symbolic of the birth of the Latter-day King. The father, having been assassinated by his brother, and the son, needing to come back in the latter days to restore the kingdom. So what happened with the assassination of Joseph Smith again? Why were John Taylor and Willard Richards, who were in Brigham Young's missionary quorum, with only the keys of Peter, James, and John, what were they doing there? Why was Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball giving money to the members of the Warsaw Lodge to have a group come to assassinate Joseph Smith? Yeah, Joseph already called Brigham Young Judas and his 12 Judas the following year. 1839, after Joseph Smith was again freed from jail, because he was constantly being falsely accused. Brigham Young purposely was trying to get him out of the picture so that Brigham Young could take over. But Joseph Smith kept getting free and coming back. In the disturbance of 1838, which I have called the leadership crisis 
Brigham Young had Joseph Smith falsely arrested yet again after Joseph Smith had started his history which is coded if you hadn't figured out by now because son Amun and father Amun appeared to him and then Nephi gave him plates which the Knights Templar had Egyptian treasure plates which they came to America and buried in the ground at X marks the spot of the first and third day of darkness in caves remember Joseph Smith talking about how he found the original Book of Mormon plates of gold not golden Joseph Smith condemned Brigham Young for kicking out Thomas B. Marsh in that leadership crisis. Brigham Young also had William Smith kicked out and excommunicated. So when Joseph Smith got back, he put William Smith back in and called Brigham Young Judas. For chasing out Thomas B. Marsh, a good man. Brigham Young made sure to have Joseph Smith rearrested again in 1839. So in 1840, when Joseph Smith got out again, he called the whole 12 missionaries which is different from the Twelve High Council who are supposed to be the ones to excommunicate not Brigham Young he called them all Judas who followed Brigham Young referring to the Last Supper is it I? In that same discourse, 19 July 1840, Joseph Smith talked about the threat to America. That's where we incorrectly get the hanging by a thread. And I think it was actually brink of ruin is more closely to what he said. The, the Constitution. He said that Mormons were supposed to save the Constitution, save America from the beast who would be put on the throne of America in the year of the sign of the birth, 2017. Who was put in by a foreign government like Babylon put Zedekiah on the throne. He warned Mormons that they needed to have built before 2017 the mountain cities of Zion and New Jerusalem before the Christ comes. The church was not named the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Brigham Young misinterpreted what Joseph Smith had said in a talk there at the end of his term, his life. <clears throat> it was always called the Church of Christ. When he used the name Jesus, it was always for code. But in section 103, he talks about Zion being redeemed. 
and verse 16 he gives us the Jewish understanding of the Christ of the latter days Messiah but Joseph Smith adds a twist therefore I will raise up mortal baby mortal parents unto my people the Mormons a man who shall lead them like as Moses led the children of Israel the David Moses dynasty Moses is the Christ of all Christ the father Christ shall we say the, the first kingdom of the tree of life for the Jews the latter-day Christ is a man like Moses for the Jews he's the crown at the top of the tree of life and here Joseph Smith is saying there will come a Mormon who will restore Joseph's organization Joseph knew he knew when he founded it that his life was in danger he knew he was going to be assassinated this is why he submitted himself freely and willingly to go to Carthage jail he knew that was it this is also why he ran for president in 1844 a hundred eighty years before the sign of the death when the kingdom would be restored for Mormons in southern Illinois not Utah not Judah who would betray the Christ and have him murdered murdered by his brothers just as the father was murdered by his brother requiring the son to restore the kingdom a future Mormon in the great and abominable church that took over and Jacob usurped Joseph's organization would have Israel Yah Prince of God come through that lineage the Holy Grail and if you're uncertain as to whether Joseph Smith is involved here you need to go to verse 21 Verily, verily, I say unto you that my servant Joseph Smith, Jr. is the man to whom I liken the servant to whom the Lord of the vineyard spake in the parable which I have given you. Which parable? There's a parable in section 101, verse 43. And now I will show unto you a parable that you may know my will concerning the redemption of Zion. Joseph Smith also talks about this in his 19 July 1840 talk. A certain nobleman had a spot of land, a choice land. He said unto Joseph Smith, I just read it to you. Go ye into my vineyard even upon this very choice piece of land and plant twelve olive trees twelve tribes of Israel Mormons are new Israelites 
Joseph Smith Sr. was a new Israelite. They were a Congregationalist type church in Vermont. They believed in prophecy. They believed in Hebrew as the angelic tongue. That's where Joseph Smith Sr. was taught all about Jewish mysticism. This is why Joseph Smith Sr. had his Tree of Life dreams. Starting to see how the Book of Mormon got created? I told you, the keystone of church history is Canandaigua, New York, where Joseph Smith Sr. was the Master Mason of the York Rites. Where William Morgan was getting falsely arrested, preventing him from completing the publication of his book that exposed the threat to America by the Scottish Rites Masons. His book never got published by him. And a certain junior was given the responsibility to distract the money man, Martin Harris, because Martin Harris insisted on being a part of it if he was going to spend his money on the publication of the book. So how do you get him out of the way, but yet get him involved? Well, you take him to the Midway Point in Harmony, Pennsylvania, north of Pittsburgh, doing those videos for you. And yet, Joseph Smith and Emma's firstborn dies. And in that distraught condition, he and his wife go to Emma's Methodist Church there in Harmony. And they have learned that Joseph Smith was a glass looker arrested on the 20th or yeah the 20th of March 1826 and they don't want his kind in the Methodists so he is banned from the Methodists and Emma and her parents have to also leave Harmony Pennsylvania Joseph Smith has now been exposed and so uh, 116 pages have to be rewritten and so while they're at the farm revelations section 3 and 10 are given Joseph is banished to what used to be called Harmony but because of the post office not wanting the same town name had it changed to the Susquehanna area and so Joseph Smith was banished to Susquehanna River Oliver Cowdery who was the messenger of the 116 pages to Joseph Smith and Harmony from Kurt well Ohio it wasn't Kirtland it was near Kirtland where Sidney Rigdon was the major author of the Book of Mormon. Joseph Smith Sr. already knew about him. They had made an arrangement with him. Sidney Rigdon was compensated by being allowed to join the organization through Parley P. Pratt, one of his members of his congregation, because they had to have distance plausible deniability. So the Book of Mormon, oh, Parley B. Pratt just happened to be in the area. Palmyra. Hmm, interesting. And so, yes, Parley P. Pratt, if you saw the church video, read it overnight, wanted to be a member immediately. If you know who composed what in the Book of Mormon, you'll see that Parley P. Pratt had 
specific plagiarisms of his in specific places in the Book of Mormon. The beginning and at the end, a couple scattered in the middle, just to keep his attention. Hey, this is like something I would have written. Sidney Rigdon is the one who also kept the name of the original church, Church of Christ. wonder why Brigham Young would call him apostate when he was maintaining the original church of Joseph's. And he got to do his revision of the Bible that Alexander Campbell only wanted to do the New Testament. And so Sidney Rigdon left. But because of the brain injury that Sidney Rigdon occurred in early in his life, He was forced to create sermons by plagiarizing other people's work. And uh, so he wasn't able to do his own work as a result. And so Joseph Smith put him right to work on the revision that he wanted. Yep, 180 years, guys. This is why he ran for president in 1844. This is why the Book of Mormon was rewritten with the Tree of Life, which 18 and 10 is 180. Joseph Smith is the base, which is the kingdom. The Latter-day Messiah is the crowning head. Joseph Smith was assassinated by his brothers. He is the first Messiah. second Messiah is the one to restore the kingdom. The second Jesus. The second God of salvation. Which is nine. Two nines equals eighteen. Which is life. Ten is perfection. president was to give Mormons the code that in 180 years from 1844 would be the time when the kingdom would be restored. That they'd have to have it built by 2017. But there would be a war in America that they were supposed to fight to save America from the Russian puppet king who would be put in the throne in 2017. Oops. I am the only one who supports and defends Joseph Smith. Mormons only give lip service and ex-Mormons trust the lies that Brigham Young and company have told everybody. Brigham Young is the source of all the lies about Joseph Smith. It is Brigham Young and his Danites who sabotaged his organization, who infiltrated it and destroyed it. They falsely accused him numerous times to get him out of the way, to get him locked up in jail, just like William Morgan. Heber C. Kimball reveals that he knew all about this and therefore identifies himself as the enemy 
who is going to destroy America by infiltrating the church and taking it over. Brigham Young wanted revenge for the church not healing his wife who died. And after attending church for three years, failing to heal his wife, he then joined the church immediately to seek revenge with Heber C. Kimball for the anti-Mason movement caused by Joseph Smith Sr. getting William Morgan out of the country and taking over the publication of his book. And having Joseph Smith Jr. be the front man, the father and the son, Joseph, Joseph, Nephi, Nephi, Yah, Yah, Amen, Amen. See the pattern? So, when you wonder about the false Christs who are supposed to deceive Mormons, it's very clear to me. The question is, why isn't it clear to Mormons? Today is yet another example. Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the false Christ, is false church with false Christ. They are the great and abominable church warned about in the Book of Mormon. So how do I get through to Mormons? How do Mormons turn to the true Christ? Because in the first vision, these personages, the one in particular, the son, tells Joseph that Constantine and his Nicene Creed is an abomination. There was no historical Jesus. So if the Jesus that appears to Joseph Smith is not the Jesus of the Gospels because the Jesus of the Gospels is not historical, who appeared to Joseph? It's code. Just as Nephi appears to Joseph. Code. These are dreams. They aren't history. So Nelson, uh-oh, his needing the church history to be history, historically accurate, in order to be crucial for his authority, is destroyed. Kabbalah, Kabbalah. 